What's up guys, my name is Ace, and welcome back to another Gun Guide. This is the series where I go into great detail with all of the stats of every one of the weapons in COD World War II. In today's episode, we're moving into the shotgun category and covering the combat shotgun. Now, the combat shotgun in this game is actually based off of the Winchester Model 1897, but once again, there were likely some licensing issues here, and therefore they had to make up a name of their own, and they went with the combat shotgun for whatever reason. I feel like they could have been a bit more creative with that. But with the Winchester 1897, this was actually in production from 1897 all the way up to 1957, so for a very, very long time. The model used in Call of Duty World War II appears to be a 12 gauge. And normally I cover the real life rate of fire, but since this is a pump action shotgun, your rate of fire is essentially how fast you can pump it and pull that trigger. Getting into COD World War II, they actually followed suit with the Black Ops 3 model of shotguns, where they deal a base damage just for getting a hit, and then on top of that base damage, you get a damage per pellet. So the base damage profile with the combat shotgun is 94, 84, 40. On top of that base damage for every pellet that you hit, you will deal 2 damage to your target. So let's just say you're in your maximum damage range, we're right up close and personal. If I hit one single pellet, it will deal that 94 base damage, plus 2 damage for that one pellet that hit, and therefore I'll be dealing 96 damage. If I'm right up close and personal and I hit all 8 pellets, because each shot that you fire will fire 8 pellets, then I will deal 110 damage because it's that 94 base damage, plus 2 damage per pellet times 8 pellets, that gives us 110 total damage. So our maximum damage per shot, assuming every single pellet hits with the combat shotgun, is going to be 110 damage up close, 100 damage at medium range, and 56 damage at those longer ranges where you're still able to get a hit though. Our rate of fire with the combat shotgun is approximately 58 rounds per minute, and with rapid fire that bumps it up just a little bit to about 61 rounds per minute. Now normally here I would cover headshots, but the combat shotgun in this game gets no additional damage for headshots whatsoever, so headshots are literally irrelevant on this gun. And now let's get into the ranges. This is what really matters with the shotguns. The first damage range where you're dealing that 94 base damage extends out to 6 meters. That means from 0 to 6 meters, if you hit 3 pellets out of your 8 pellets in your shot, you will be getting the kill. Now our next damage range extends from 6 meters to 10 meters. In this damage range, we deal 84 base damage, which means you have to hit literally every single one of the 8 pellets in order to get a one-shot kill within this range. It is possible, but it's very likely you'll end up just getting a hit marker and having him really, really close to death. Now from 10 to 15 meters, this is where we get into our minimum damage range where we deal that 40 base damage, and therefore it could take you 2 to 3 shots to get a kill. If you're hitting at least 5 pellets per shot, you can kill in 2 shots at this range, but if you're hitting less than that, it's going to take you 3 shots to kill. Keep in mind, in core game modes on a full health enemy that doesn't have any sort of armor or anything, the combat shotgun will never take more than 3 shots to kill because you're dealing that 40 base damage. Even if you're only hitting 1 pellet per shot, it's still only going to take 3 shots maximum to get a kill. Now beyond that 15 meter range, this is where the shotgun deals literally no damage. The pellets just fade out of existence, they don't deal any damage whatsoever to your enemies. As for advanced rifling, according to the hard stats that I now have access to, apparently advanced rifling increases your ranges by 13%, but it reduces your long range damage. However, when I hand test this, I don't see any noticeable difference whatsoever to the one-shot kill potential with this weapon. And basically the only observable difference that I noticed is that it increases your ability to get a hit marker at those longer ranges, like beyond 15 meters. Aside from that, I can't tell any situations where advanced rifling is actually helping you out. As for hardcore modes, basically the way this works with the base damage is if you can hit your enemy, you will be getting a kill. You should never, ever get a hit marker with the combat shotgun in hardcore modes. Now normally here, this is where I'd take a look at recoil and idle sway and all that kind of stuff. This stuff is pretty much irrelevant with the shotguns, but let's get into our pellet spread when we're hip firing versus when we're aiming down sight. As you can see here, without steady aim, this is our normal hip fire pattern. You can see where our eight pellets went. It's got a decent amount of spread to it, a couple little outliers there, and you will often be missing pellets unless you're right up close and basically touching your enemy. When we aim down sight though, this actually tightens up our spread on our shot and you can see that very clearly by this image here. So usually if you're within that 6 to 10 meter range or even beyond that, aiming down sight is likely going to be your best bet. But generally within 6 meters, usually you just want to hip fire because you only need to hit those 3 pellets. But if you have the time and you want to make extra sure you're going to kill the guy in one shot, 
Aiming down sight is a surefire way to tighten up that spread and make sure you're hitting the maximum amount of pellets. Now just comparing our hipfire spread to the other shotguns in the game, the combat shotgun actually has the worst hipfire spread in the game. As you can see here, it is the one outlier in the shotgun category that has a slightly wider hipfire spread, and that's just something to keep in mind. Getting into our capacity, the standard capacity of the combat shotgun is 7 rounds with 21 in reserve, and when we put extended mags on there that takes it up to 10 rounds with 32 in reserve. As for our reload time, the reload time is a little bit unique with the shotgun because we load one shell at a time, we don't just reload a whole magazine all at once. So our first shell is going to take 0.67 seconds to reload, and then every shell after that, if you don't break your reload and you just keep reloading, is going to take 0.6 seconds to reload. One little tip that I have for you guys here is you can pop a shell in your gun and only break your sprint for a very short period of time and then you can just sprint cancel and keep going. This tip allows you to get around the map just fine. You don't even have to stop to think about reloading. You can reload on the go and it doesn't really take you out of the fight at all. Getting into our aim down sight time, this is more important than some people might think with the shotguns because like I said earlier, that will tighten up your spread. It's going to take 250 milliseconds to aim down sight. And our sprint out time is quite slow at 275 milliseconds. To me, this is pretty unacceptable for shotguns. They should have a much faster base sprint out time in my opinion. This is painfully slow and this is going to get you killed in a lot of situations. Our standard movement speed is 100%, which is standard for shotguns, and our strafe speed while aiming down sight is surprisingly fast at 80%. So overall, the combat shotgun, at least in my opinion, is currently the best shotgun in the game. It's at least the one that I'm most successful with, but having said that, it's a lot less consistent than we've seen with shotguns in previous years with Call of Duty. If we compare this directly to Black Ops 3 because they use the same style of damage, if we compare it to its counterpart, which is the KRM, the KRM would deal a 98 base damage within 0 to 6 meters with 2 damage per pellet on top of that. That meant with the KRM you would get a one shot kill by hitting just one pellet if you were within 6 meters. The combat shotgun in this game isn't nearly as forgiving as the KRM in Black Ops 3. Within that 0 to 6 meters, like I said earlier, you have to hit 3 pellets to get a one shot kill. And therefore, you're often going to run into situations where you get hit markers at practically point blank range with this shotgun. And that can be extremely frustrating because you're already putting yourself at a huge disadvantage by using a shotgun. And I personally feel it should be more consistent up close. Having said that, if you do play your situations right, you can find success with this shotgun, especially more so than some of the other shotguns in the game. Make sure if you have the time, aim down sight at your target, that will tighten up your spread a little bit and ensure that you hit as many pellets as possible. As for attachments on this shotgun, there's really not too many attachments that I like to run. Extended mags I feel like is not necessary because I can use that little trick where I reload on the go and it doesn't really get in the way of anything. Quick draw can actually be quite nice and I often will run quick draw on this, which seems counterintuitive for a shotgun, but aiming down sight does help quite a bit with this. Steady aim. This is something where I kind of have mixed thoughts about steady aim. The thing about steady aim when you have a base damage with your pellet system is sometimes you just want to get a good spread of your pellets to make sure you're hitting pellets on target and you don't have to be quite as precise with your shot in those point blank scenarios. So sometimes it actually pays to not have steady aim on your gun, especially when you have the ability to simply aim down sight to tighten up that spread. So if you get in a situation where you need the tighter spread, you aim down sight. If you get in a situation where you're right up close and personal point blank, you can just hip fire right away and you get a good spread out there so that you have a great chance of hitting your target. So steady aim really comes down to personal preference. Some people like it, some people won't like it so much. The only other attachment that I ever consider using on the combat shotgun is rapid fire. It doesn't really do too much for you, but it's kind of the thing where nothing else really stands out and there's nothing else I really want to use, so I might as well pop rapid fire on there. Moving on to a couple example classes that I have for you guys with my shotguns. First off, I'd just like to let you guys know that I don't like using expeditionary with the shotguns. If you guys haven't seen my video about the incendiary shells in this game, I will leave that link down below, but at least on the combat shotgun, incendiary shells are usually actually a detriment to you, so I don't like running those at all, and I don't really like the perks of expeditionary either, so normally I actually prefer running airborne. So this is an airborne class that I have for you guys. We've got the combat shotgun with quick draw and rapid fire. Gunslinger is our basic training perk. This is something that I use 100% of the time when I'm using a shotgun because like I said earlier, that base sprint out time is unacceptable for shotguns. You're going to find yourself getting killed a lot if you don't have Gunslinger on your class. This allows you to hip fire out of sprint instantly, but if you break your sprint by aiming down sight, you will still have to complete your sprint out time even with this perk equipped. 
My secondary is the Luger, or the P08, and the reason behind this, instead of the machine pistol, which is what I would normally use, is the P08 is a little bit better at longer ranges, and when I have a shotgun, sometimes I see a guy, he's not really paying much attention, he's at a bit of a range, and I can't quite close that distance, but I have a nice clean shot on him. I can just swap to my pistol and take him out, because my shotgun isn't going to be effective at that range. For a lethal, as always, I've got a sticky grenade. Next up is pretty much the exact same class, but this one is using the Mountain Division, so this is more of a flanking style class where I have those silent footsteps, I stay off the enemy's recon plane radar, and I can flank around and hopefully sneak up on some enemies. With this one, the only other thing that I changed is I popped Steady Aim on there instead of Rapid Fire, mainly just to show to you guys that sometimes I use Steady Aim, sometimes I don't. And with that, we're going to wrap up today's video on the Combat Shotgun. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think of the combat shotgun in this game? Do you guys think it needs a buff? Do you think it needs a nerf? Do you think it's fine how it is? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.